Hi, how are you? Monica Dana Hufford's here, the Whole Heart Energy Healing. Welcome to day 23 of your Stairway to Sovereignty, forgoing fears for freedom. We're talking about the dreaded four-letter F word, F-E-A-R, fear. We're facing it and tossing it out on its rear, giving you freedom and placing you into a fun and fabulous new year. Birthday girl. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> Fear serves a purpose. It is intended to get our attention. It's a messenger. Yet once the issue at hand has your attention, Feeling fear is no longer helpful. It's harmful. It's now time to take action in a different direction instead of staying in its tight grip. We're taking on a challenge to recognize how fears in our thoughts, ideas, attitudes, and beliefs can negatively control how we think, act, and feel. We're making fear work for us instead of thinking it's against us. Instead of shooting the messenger, we're paying attention to the message so we can course correct and continue. Yesterday, we looked at the fear of success and the fear of failure and how they were tied into self-sabotage. When you prioritize instant gratification, avoid what needs to be done, ignore self-care, procrastinate and focus on defeating self-thoughts, that's when you know you are self-sabotaging. You need to be honest with yourself. You deserve better. Determine what you're afraid of, and if so, then you can rise above self-sabotage. So how do you fix the self-destructive behavior? Well, we talked about feeling the pain. We talked about losing the space in this thing because it's, Ah, this thing doesn't work properly. <laughs> Anyways, there we go. Picking one small distinct change, committing big time to it, that small change, and learning to believe that you can. And finally, falling, finding support. I'm sure I'm on the wrong one. I am on the wrong one. Here we go. So while it's wonderful to finally let go of that fear and start feeling good, some people feel worse after a positive income outcome. Holy moly. Must be because uh, I'm a year older today. <laughs> <laughs> it's just getting me down here. <laughs> Today's broadcast will deal with this form of fear, and it's titled, Let the Good Times Roll. Hi, Lila. Good to see you here. Have you ever had a negative feeling of waiting for the other shoe to drop? It's like you're afraid the good times won't last. And sometimes this feeling comes with a side dish of, well, if the good times won't last, why bother feeling good at all? Staying neutral is a much more stable feeling to maintain. Or is it? And if that's not enough, there's another feeling of reaching the upper edges, that invisible glass ceiling that seems to limit our amount of good that can happen, or reaching a boundary that's in place that doesn't allow you to feel good for too long. Since it feels like it's your fate to feel meh or miserable, why go through all the trouble? What's the point of being open to receiving more good when it won't last anyway. People who have an irrational aversion to being happy suffer from something called sherophobia. It basically means you're afraid to participate in anything fun. Why is there a fear that this feeling won't last? Well, some people find life too unpredictable. The thought of not knowing what could happen tomorrow can scare us. When you accomplish something amazing, you'd think 
burst of happiness would be followed by maybe relief, right? Well, that's not true for everyone. In fact, it's actually not unusual to feel more anxious following good news or hard-earned success than you do when you're putting out fires or working hard. Anxiety is a primitive response that's hardwired into the brain. The brain's fear circuit works very quickly and seldom pauses to differentiate between good anxiety and bad. So when something good happens, the physical symptoms you feel are similar to those that you associate with panic or fear. And even when you are able to differentiate between good stress and panic or bad stress, the climb down can be an anxiety trigger in itself. See, when your body becomes accustomed to a chronic state of anxiety, the positive physiological changes that happen after good news can ironically trigger the sense that something isn't right. And it's simply because you're not used to feeling good. Huh. So as a result, your body never fully lets go of its hypervigilant state. And if you're that type of person, having the belief that the good event will probably be followed by something bad, then it just compounds the problem. Instead of enjoying the moment, you spend that time waiting for the bad to appear. Other reasons for the fear and anxiety can include a learned response of being resented or ridiculed when you've had success or something to lose or experience of losing things soon. Fortunately, this is a learned way of thinking that can also be managed. The first step to managing or eliminating this fear is to firmly acknowledge that it happens in the first place. Good things come and go. It's the cycle of life. When you realize life is ebb and flow and attend to the stress and now conscious belief, your reactions can begin to change and your physiology, and this thing jumped again, And your physiology can be acclimated to this new belief. You see, the stress is felt around the thought, which then triggers a feeling. But this feeling is really a sign that something amazing is happening and that you deserve to enjoy it. Negative thoughts feelings and fears of this type can be replaced by an attitude of acceptance and then a release from its grip and then you can be free of this fear heads up though it might take some time for this mode of thinking to become a natural reaction it's natural for the psyche to want to go back to old thought patterns so this new one will take time and patience to become hardwired into your brain. Allow yourself to feel your anxiety and allow yourself to take in the good. Being more open to positive outcomes can reduce the likelihood that good things will feel less like a mistake to your brain. Spending a few seconds at a time truly savoring a good experience when it happens can train your brain to experience positive emotions more easily. Talk to someone. If you struggle with this worry or fear and continue to find it difficult to expect good outcomes, or you're still suspicious of them coming, therapy or healing energy work can be helpful. You can get to the core of why experiencing joy is such a grind for you and learn some strategies that will increase your tolerance for all emotions. And like I said, if you're still feeling overwhelmed by this type of fear, book a session with me, and together 
will kick your fear out on its rear with a restorative technique to help you heal. And putting together some courses that will make healing and achieving your goals faster, easier, and more efficient. You deserve a more balanced, fear-free, and happier life. Message me for more information. I'll put that link down below in a little bit. I hope that you're supported during this quest and can find someone to go along with you on your journey. Let's do this together. Together is better. Use the link below called Getting to Know You and we'll explore what you want to achieve in life and move forward into a happier way of being. Monica Dina Hupperts of Whole Heart Energy Healing. This has been day 23 of your Stairway to Sovereignty, for going fears for freedom. So you can get a new year, a new decade, and a new you off to a freeing and abundant new start. And I just want to say thank you for the lovely birthday wishes. They are so appreciated. There was quite a few I had to go through and oh, Happy birthday! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Cheers to your success. And thank you, Lila, for joining me live. It was wonderful to see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.